Yes, mom. Hello, everybody, and welcome to Punchlines. I'm Frank Nicotero, longtime comedian and a lifelong sports fan, so this show is just perfect for me. I have a blast doing it. And when the show is over and doesn't count anymore today, maybe I'll do something amazing like this dunk that Malik Monk did last night for the Sacramento Kings. Clock's expired, but why not throw down? Hey! That is impressive. <laughs> the ref is even like, okay, uh, you can't call technical after a game. Now, usually the other team might take offense to that, right? Uh, so maybe there could be some retribution next time the uh, the Kings play that Spurs. Spurs, that's right. It was Wemby, that's right. It's not I don't really going to be much of retribution because, I mean, the Spurs, granted, the Spurs almost won last night. Yeah, the they Kings, did. They were big, they were nine and a half point underdogs. Yeah, it did escape, but should we talk about it right now? Let's talk. By the way, first of all, let's see Mac McClung do that in an NBA game. Oh wait, he doesn't play in the NBA, but he won the dunk contest um, twice. Let's talk about the California parlay. If you watched the show yesterday, I said, "Hey, it's National California Day. We got four California teams in action. We didn't necessarily want to bet them to win." So Ryan came up with the genius idea. Let's bet the money lines and take the favorites. Let's take the Warriors over the Lakers. Yep. Let's take the Clipper. Uh, let's take the Thunder over the Clippers. Yep. And Sacto mm -hmm. over uh, San, Antonio. San Antonio. Yep. All the home teams. All the home teams. It was plus two twenty two, and the day yesterday was two twenty two. Boom! It hit. Yep. Ryan hit me. Uh, he hit me up like towards the end of the, the time when the mm -hmm. games were going. He's like, "Did you bet it?" I'm like, "Yeah, I bet it. I bet it lightly, so we won." But. Yeah, we got a winner. Gave out a winner. So hopefully everybody. everybody it was a follows. team effort yeah. yesterday. Yeah, exactly. Uh, it was nice. It was nice to uh, look at my account and see a little bing, bing. Yeah. It, it go up. There you go. It green for once. Yeah, a win for once. The Super Bowl. I hadn't really, I hadn't bet much since the Super Bowl, I think. Yeah. And you, of course, went what, 14 and 6 on Super Bowl? Exactly. Yep. Yeah, I, I think I lost about 80 or 90 bucks. It wasn't too bad. It was all saved because I took, uh, took KC to win. I mean, that was my biggest bet. And then I uh, won $5 on heads. <laughs> nice, nice. That was good. I, I wanted tails. I didn't want. Uh, let's see here. Uh, so Bob Dell is in the room. Bob Dell. Uh, he's like, oh my God, Lanny. That's right. Lanny for Terry is going to be on the show. I'm going to go ahead and say it right now because I'm very excited. He's my favorite play by play announcer of all time. From 1976 to 2008, he did over 5,000 games for the P Pirates. I didn't say the town. Good save, yeah. And Lanny for Terry was on the call for one of the most famous infamous plays in sports history that everyone knows about. It's reached pop culture. We're going to talk about that later with Lanny because he called the game, and today is the anniversary of when it happened back in, uh, was it 85 or 86? I think I wrote it down somewhere. I wasn't alive. So. You weren't alive. Okay, thanks for pointing that out. It's 1985. So 15 plus 24, 39 years ago. 39 years ago, Lanny was there. We're going to talk about that. We'll talk about spring training. And if that wasn't enough today, another guy – whose last name ends in a vowel, will be here for the first time ever, I think, on this show. Yep. I've known him. I talk to him all the time. He's here all the time. He usually does sports, by the book. You yell his name. I yell Vinny! Vinny M! Vinny episode, Maliula yeah. will be here. Yay, Vinny. So we got Lanny, Vinny, Frankie, Ryan. -y. You see, you screwed everything up. Everyone we could do. Katie, Kaden, Katie, it doesn't work. Annie, Annie, Shawnee, that all works. Yeah. Anne's feeling, Anne, are you feeling better? The show's making her feel better already, ladies and gentlemen. And it's a little under the weather, but she's a trooper because she's Wonder Woman. So anyway, big show today. I'm very excited about it. Um, today is February. I got, I'm going to get the date right today. Will you? What? What did I do wrong? Him. Okay. February 23rd. There you go. February 23rd. It's the first time, I think, this week that I've got the date correct. Uh, anyway, February 23rd, 2024. It is episode 96. And I want you to listen up to this. 96 episodes of this program. That's more episodes. Than Mork and Mindy did. That's right. Mork and Mindy only did 95. You ever seen Mork and Mindy, Ryan? I don't think I've ever heard of Mork and Mindy. <laughs> oh, my God. You've heard of Mork and Mindy? I've heard of Rick and Morty. Oh, Jesus. He's heard of Rick and Morty. Uh, Bob, I'm dying here. Do you hear this? I've never heard of Mork and Mindy. Mork and Mindy. How about this show? Now, Mork and Mindy only, that's Robin Williams. That was his breakout show. He oh, played okay. an alien. Okay, okay. Pam Dauber. Now you know it. Okay. I know Robin Williams. Welcome Back Cotter only did 95 episodes. We've done more episodes now than Welcome Back Cotter in. Do you know, are you familiar with Welcome Back Cotter? Oh, my God. This is, you know, I swore I'd never be that guy who'd be like, oh, these kids. Know. You've never heard of Welcome Back Cotter either. Can't say that I have, no. You guys don't watch, like, Nick at Night and stuff anymore? Uh, that was, <laughs> when I was a kid, that was George Lopez. <laughs> 
Nick at Night was the George Lopez show. <laughs> I uh, I did a show at the university. Oh, I can't yeah, say it. Wake up in the middle of the night to Lowrider. Yeah. <laughs> I think we all have. I lived in L.A. But I uh, uh, I opened for George at the university of my hometown uh, many, many moons ago. Good guy. We went out and had a sandwich. Nice guy. Uh, Gilligan's Island did 98 episodes. So we haven't caught Gilligan's Island. We're going to catch Gilligan's Island next week. Very exciting because we will hit. Because of Leap Year, that will be episode uh, 100, right? Leap Year, we figured it out. The 29th? Yeah. Yeah. So next Thursday, I'm sure you guys have so many surprises planned for the 100th episode, right? We've got a surprise for everybody on the next day, 101. Yes, uh, 101 Dalmatians. I have to somehow dress up as a Dalmatian. Uh, details to come because I lost a bet to Ryan who proposed that idea. That was a good idea. Yeah. And I thought, oh, he's going to have to come. But you had to come as a penguin, so it's my turn. So Gilligan's Island, you did 98. We're coming for you, little buddy. Little buddies with the skipper called Gilligan. Uh, Bob Bob has to be there having sympathy for me. Let's see here. Uh, B-Town Dummy. Uh, <laughs> uh, B-Town Dummy. Did Frank just get unfrozen like Dr. Evil and only reference shows from 40 years ago? Yeah, because I'm talking about the amount of episodes we've done, Christian. Uh, do you know uh, Dr. Evil, Ryan? Have you heard of Dr. Evil? Yeah. Okay. So, Sorry, Christian, you're referring to a movie that's 25 years old. George Lopez. Yo, George Lopez, Jerry. Jerry's down in the basement. Uh, Nanu Nanu. Bob Dowd. That Nanu Nanu is what Mork would say. Mork and Mindy. Nanu Nanu. Shazbat. That was his swear word. Shazbat. Say Shazbat. I want to hear you say Shazbat. Am I supposed to say it like that? Yes, that's how he said it. Shazbat. 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 And then he'd shake hands like this. You'd split fingers like, well, it's a, that could be our secret shake, Ryan. Shazbat. Uh, Mork and Mindy. Anyway, uh, Frank sent me to the bed. I did not send you to the basement. Throw him in the bathroom. It's like a Bronx tale. Anyway, Bob is here. Uh, Bob's very excited. So is uh, Frank Mergy is here. Very excited about Lanny. Frank Mergy, by the way, big shout out to Frank Mergy for helping me get Lanny on the show today. So that's going to be fun. Uh, so it's episode 96. No collage today. We did 95 yesterday. I'm told there is no collage. So what do you have for us today, We've young Ryan McCormick? The champions. Of nineteen. Oh, I like it. All right, let's see it. Champions of 1996. Hit it. Okay, uh, of course. That's why he went with it. Chicago Bulls are in there. All right, Chicago Bulls. Well, Ooh. I more went with it because of the center. Of what? Uh, the, the center logo. Oh, you put Dallas Cowboys right in the middle. Oh, they beat the Steelers in the Super Bowl. Yeah. You son yeah. of a... And by the way, I think I've mentioned this before. It was January of 96. I was here in Vegas. It's the only other Super Bowl I've ever been to Vegas for. Frank Mergy was there. That's when the hot dime incident happened. After the game, we were so bummed that the Steelers lost. I bet all these different bets. The one bet I forgot to bet was the Steelers straight because they did cover. Should have won the game. Anyway, me and Dave Dietrich and Frank Mergy and Dave Sotomayor, a bunch of my friends from Pittsburgh are here. Dave saw a dime on the street and he went to pick it up. And it was, it was hot. S some young kids had lit it with a, it was a trick they were doing back then. They'd take a lighter and heat up a dime and figure, oh, people are going to pick it up to throw it in a slot machine. So he picked it up. And Dave Dietrich was a big dude. He, did, he wanted to hurt them, but he did not. That's my memory of the championship of 1996. So you have a couple of gold medal winners there. Is that Edwin Moses? No. No. Michael no. Johnson. Yes. It is Michael Johnson. Yes. Okay. I, yeah, Ed, I, Edwin Moses. Them, I'm already, I can hear, I can hear B-Town dummy typing now. Edwin Moses was from the 80s. So Michael Johnson. Michael Johnson, yeah. Uh, he was the male athlete of the year that, we, that year as well. Yeah, how many goals does he have wrapped around his neck there? Um, so two. He won the, he broke the record in the two hundred meter and the four hundred. The four. Meter. I remember him the four. Yeah. And he was the first male athlete to win both of those gold in both of those in wow. the same Olympics. Oh, that's great. And that uh, sadly, that's the Olympics that were in Atlanta. I just realized ninety six Olympics where Richard Jewell and the bombing. They've made movies about it. Some people were hurt. I remember watching the the coverage live back east. I almost said where I was, but I'm not going. To. I might have been in California by then. Anyway, I remember watching the footage and you. It was like the loud boom. You heard it. All right. And then the female. Oh, uh, you're tricking me there. Is that a swimmer? Joey B got it. Uh, I'm not looking. Is it a swimmer? Yes, it is a swimmer. It's not It's not little Janet Evans. It's uh, Lenicki or what are the initials? Uh, Katie. But I know. She's got three names. Uh, Jackie Joyner Kersey. <laughs> it's not her. A-V-D. A-B-D? A-V-D. V is in. Annie Victory Day. No, what's her name? Amy Van Dyken. Oh, I, I've heard of her name. I would have never got. I was thinking of the other 
The real oh wow, look at that. Amy Van Dyke. Way to go, Joey B. Oh, she's from Fort Collars, Fort Collins, Colorado, where Colorado State University is. Yeah, I remember the name, but I, Janet Evans is another '80s name. She was the the first U.S. woman to win four golds in the same games. Was she really? Yeah. Wow. Yeah, I do remember the name. Wow. Very good. Let's see here. Cannot believe that Ryan never heard of Mork and Mindy. Thank you. Makes us all feel old. I know Joey B. I name. didn't say the P word. Not who's not Sean. That is Sean. <laughs> okay. Yeah. How much am I owed to? What's the tally at? Forty-five bucks. Yeah. All right. I didn't say it. All right. Let's see here. I have another challenge for Frank. Uh, no reference before 1999. Hurts a nickel in the swear jar. He'll be down four grand by the end of the week. We like to live in the past. All right. So anyway, uh, that's big. So well, let's take a look at the champions in 1996. Michael Johnson, Van Dyke. All right, you got the Bulls. The Bulls right there. That's Michael Jordan time. Yep, they beat the Sonics. Yeah, beat the Sonics in six games. Yeah, they beat the Sonics. Take that, B Town dummy. That was his team. Oh, you don't even have a team anymore, do you? They moved to Oklahoma. Uh, the New York Yankees won the World Series. The last out, I believe, was made by Charlie Hayes. Uh, caught it at third base. I can see that replay. He was a pirate earlier in the year. And, of course, now his son plays for the, the Pirates, for Brian Hayes. And the other champions were Kentucky Wildcats. Was that Calipari or was that Patino? That was Patino, I think. Rick Patino. Then you have uh, Nebraska? Syracuse. Yes. Yep, they beat Florida in the Fiesta Bowl. Wow, that 62 long? 62 to 24. Oh, yeah. my, I remember that beatdown. That, that was Tom Osborne, maybe? Maybe, I don't remember. But anyway, Nebraska, and then you got the, uh, the, the Lanch. Colorado Avalanche won the Stanley Cup. Yep, they swept the Panthers, their first cup uh, yeah. in franchise history. Unbelievable. All right, well, there you go. Hey, Frank. Yes, sir, ma'am. I mean, to be fair with Ryan. Yes. I mean, how many, how many of your parents' shows could you name? Or your grandparents' shows? Because, like, technically, you are... Like maybe could be the age of Ryan's grandparents. Oh come on, Ann! You're on my boat. I could name a lot of my parents' shows because you got to remember, Ann. There was only three or four channels, and all the reruns of like you know, Green Acres or the Honeymooners. But what what about the other ones? Like not Leave It to Beaver. Before that, like the Don the Donna Reed show. Did you watch? No, the Donna? I didn't watch that. Okay. Okay. All right. All right. But you know. I mean, John Travolta was on Welcome Back, Cutter. Robin Ooh. Williams. They became major movie stars. The movies that you've seen. You know who John Travolta is. Shut up. You know what? It's 2-12, ladies and gentlemen, and I can see uh, one of my childhood uh, heroes is already on camera. I'm going to put the headsets on. I uh, mentioned earlier, ladies and gentlemen. Oh, <laughs> nice. Lanny, have you ever hit yourself in the <laughs> eye with the headphones? Oh, my God. <laughs> well, that's going to be something we see on upcoming shows. Ow. <laughs> God, that hurt. Anyway, this gentleman, as I said, called for over 5,000 games for my beloved Pirates. Lanny, I'm not allowed to say the hometown because I gave it up for Lent, and every time I say the town that the Pirates are from, I have to give $5, and so far I'm up to $45. This gentleman was the first play-by-play -play announcer that I grew up to love. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, he's also here on a special day, which we'll get to. Lanny for Terry is here, ladies yeah, and gentlemen. Lanny. Thank you. Thank you. Lanny, Thank you very much. This is, this is such an honor for me, and I, I mentioned it to you yesterday when I texted you. We have a mutual friend in Pittsburgh, Ryan Recker, who works for Channel 4, that hooked us up. I actually I have several autographs that I used to get from you because at Three River Stadium, you used to come down, and I don't know what inning you would, you would be at the home plate area there, and I used to get free tickets from Rick Roden, who came into my parents' video store. Rick Roden, Johnny Ray, Jason Thompson, Manny Sarmiento, all these guys would come in, and you would be down there. You'd grab, I don't know, I, I, for some reason I vision you with an ice cream cone maybe or something. I don't know. But I got your autograph many times. Anyway, thank you for being here. Well, th well thank you, and um, I'm really honored to be on your show. Uh, Rick Roden, um, one of my favorite people, um, uh, Kent Biggerstaff and I, Ken was the trainer, the trainer of the Pirates. Yeah. We played a lot of golf together, and oh. uh, and very often we played with Rick Roden. Uh, and you know, very often guys that are really good golfers, like Roden is, um, they they don't like playing with guys that aren't good golfers. <laughs> but, but 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 Rick Roden was was a classic to be with, and uh, um, I'm glad I had time to to spend with him. Thank you for inviting me to be on your show. Oh. Um, I, um, I'm, I'm honored by the nice things that you oh, said about me. Thank you. Please. Thank you. I'm telling and Rick Roden, just, just to take it a step farther. He used to get, uh, further. He used to, uh, farther's distance further was the proper. Anyway, he used to get me tickets cause he came into the video store and then 25 years later, I'm in Palm Springs with some friends and there's a, a, a golf tournament there and Roden's there. And I go up and say hi to him and he remembered me. And like you said, Rick Roden, I mean, he, he wins a lot of those golf tournaments he plays in, man. 
Yeah, yeah. Um, do you remember Rick had osteomyelitis that uh, as a child? Yes, yes, uh, his le- a, yes. That's right. As a, as a child, he was playing on a slip and slide. There was a a, a pair of scissors in the grass, and oh. uh, and so he had he had some physical uh, disability in his leg, but still became a major league player and a great person and could hit the ball. That's back when pitchers, him and Donnie Robinson, those were the two. Yeah, I was going to say, Rick wasn't as good. Donnie (laughs) Robinson was the greatest hitting pitcher I ever saw. He was the best. Without question. question. So Lanny, I got my one foul ball. I got at three river stadium was Tom Seaver. It was July 6th, 81 Tom Seaver pitching Dale Barra hitting. And I got it. It was close to under. And when I got the ball, I held it up and I looked up to you guys in the booth. I was very excited. So I probably went to 500 games at Three Rivers. And uh, you were there, of course, in 79 when, when the Pirates won their last World Series. How exciting was that for you? I know you'd only been with the team maybe a couple of years at that point, right? You started in 76. Yeah. Yeah. So to Fourth see year, the Pirates uh, win the World Series, that I, I remembered I was only 10. But, man, I, it's been too long. But what was that like to be there for the Pirates winning? Well, uh, good news and bad news. Uh, the bad news for me personally was that we were not allowed to do the 79 World Series. I worked with Milo Hamilton at the time, and we weren't allowed to do the World Series. Even and, on radio? Uh, wow. You no, know, not even on radio. Oh, and I then, didn't know that. And, and, and the ironic thing about it was that there really were not a lot of Pittsburghers who cared whether Lanny and Milo did the World <laughs> Series. But then the following year, 1980, Harry Callis and Richie Ashburn with the Phillies, they weren't allowed to do the World Series. And then there was a big hubbub about it. They got it figured out. Um, but um, when I think back of all the magical things that happened, do you remember the Kent to Colby playing left field? I do. It in was San in San Francisco, Francisco he, and he caught the last out because – Tanner wanted him to get the last out, which he did. Yeah, he moved him to left. I remember. Yeah, the, the deal was is that if he didn't, if, if uh, Mike, uh, Grant, uh, Grant Jackson, Grant Jackson. Came, in to face, uh, came in to face Darrell Evans, and the plan was, because Mike Ivey was on deck, the plan was <laughs> that if if Mike if uh, Grant Jackson didn't get the final out, Teak would come back in and face Mike Ivey. But think about it. What are the odds that a guy <laughs> who's a relief pitcher should be in the outfield for one batter and that one batter, and a left-handed batter, yeah. a pull hitter, their 11s, should hit the ball to him. And that's also a- <laughs> on that. Go ahead, sorry. Also on that trip, also on that trip, in San Diego, we played a 19-inning game, and uh, Roberts, uh, three times in extra innings, had the bases loaded and the count of three balls and two strikes on the hitter and got out of all three jams, and we won that ball game. Wow. Yeah, That, that listen, I remember John Milner's Grand Slam, all that stuff. That was, you know, th- that was uh, my childhood right there. And that's why you were a huge part I'll of bet, it. I'll bet you don't remember that that was a Sunday in Pittsburgh. Yeah. Todd McGraw came into the game. Remember this. Steve Nicosia was four for four in the game. And John Milner came in to pinch hit for him. Left-handed batter against the screwball pitcher. Chuck Tanner was convinced that was it. <laughs> and then six days later in Philadelphia, Ed Ott hits a grand slam off Todd McGraw. Yeah, Tug McGraw, who famous, famously said, Tug, do you prefer playing on grass or AstroTurf? And he said, well, I've never smoked AstroTurf. So I just remember that when I think Tug McGraw. <laughs> now, in the game today, okay. in the game today with baseball, with all these changes, uh, do you like – now, we had Denny Nagel on. Denny, I've known Denny since his rookie year in Pittsburgh. No, nah, another great guy, another uh, great guy. And he's flying out here again from March 12th to the 15th. He's going to co-host from uh, here in the studio. I've known him. I oh, met him great. his rookie year. His, the day he got called up, I met him at a bar, uh, Kangaroos, on McKnight Road in the North Hills where I, where I live. And we've been friends ever since. And we, uh, Ryan, our producer, asked him, uh, if there was one rule, if you were commissioner for a day, what would you change? And he absolutely hates the 10th inning rule with the guy starting on second. Um, how do you feel about some of the changes, the pitch clock? Uh, are, you a, are you a throwback guy, or do you like the new changes? Well, I heard one, somebody once say, and I agree, I'm, I'm old, but I'm not necessarily old-fashioned. Uh, yeah, there's a lot of things about the game that I'm not in favor of, but but having been out of it now 15 years. Let, let me tell you, uh, let, let me just change the subject a little bit. Please. I gave a speech to a group of baseball people. Uh, you know what Saber is, right? Statistical yep. people. And and I gave a speech at PNC Park about a week or so ago. And um, the, the title of my speech was, are Vin Scully, Jack Buck, and Bob Prince relevant today? Hmm. And the answer is no. Yeah. If Vin Scully, Jack Buck, and Bob Prince came along today, they would just be another noise, uh, not noise, they would be just another voice 
in a conglomerate of announcing teams, which would be separated between radio and television and maybe, uh, and, and they would not have the impact on the game that, that they did. My biggest, and I teach, I teach sports broadcasting at Waynesburg University, and we have an outstanding sports broadcasting program. And so I spent a lot of time analyzing the industry, and I, I am so disappointed that there are so many things that are transpired in broadcasting. One of the things that was really great about baseball broadcast was that fans were afforded the opportunity to let the announcers shut up <laughs> and you could hear the game. You could hear the, the game breathe. You could hear the game, you know, the murmuring of the crowd. And, and that doesn't happen anymore. Every broadcast team. I mean, the, the, consider Vince Scully did the games alone. Yeah. Okay? He didn't need a color analyst. Okay. When, when, when Jack Buck and Mike Shannon worked together. Okay. They didn't work together. Bob, uh, Jack Buck did his a couple of innings. And then Mike came into his couple of innings, and Jack walked around the press box. Same thing with Bob Prince. Bob Prince did his couple of innings. Jim Woods came in, did his. Bob Prince walked around, got himself got himself a, a um, an orange juice. Or at least that's what he <laughs> said it was. Um, and and uh, you didn't have to have this constant chatter, this constant talking. Um, I mean, consider Jack Buck, Ben Scully, Ernie Harwell. Those guys, they, they, they were play-by-play announcers telling you stories. It wasn't about the analytical aspect where you always had to be super analyzing why did he hit the ball to right field and, you know, the guy backhanded stop and watch his feet. <laughs> Uh, they wouldn't, I'm telling you, they would not be relevant well, today. Well, you know, I, I was born in Pittsburgh and then we moved to LA in the, in the mid seventies for about five years. So the first games I ever heard uh, were Vince Scully. So I had a transistor radio, AM radio. So I heard Vin call the games and he had uh, Ross Porter and Jerry Doggett, I think, but I think mostly it was just Vin. And I remember listening to Jerry Royce pitch a no hitter against the giants. I think it was eight, nothing. And that was like one game that really stuck with me. And then when I was 10, we moved to Pittsburgh, and and that's when I discovered uh, Lanny Frateri. Now, I used to take a little tape recorder to the games and sit up in the, the orange seats, the orange and yellow seats in level f- 5 and 600, and I would record myself calling games, and I have those tapes somewhere. But that was something I really wanted to get into, but of course, I ended up becoming stand-up comic, but now I'm kind of doing sports. But um, what do you think of uh, um, the Pirates this year? Now, we just saw... See, people are blowing up his phone. He's an important man, ladies and gentlemen. Um, so yeah. what do you think of uh, – I, I like seeing that they paid Mitch Keller $77 million yesterday. Uh, they're, they, they have three long-term contracts, which, of course, they've never really done. So how do you feel about the Pirates? Their win total this year, we have it here at South Point. Is it 70 – it was 74 or 75, I believe. So I don't know. Spring – I hope spring's eternal. I'm obviously excited. So what do you think of the Buccos this year? Well, uh, I got to be honest with you. I, I don't. I don't follow them as much as I okay. as I did. One of the things that I felt when I left the ball club after two thousand eight was I wanted to do something else, and and um, and I I wanted to worry about different things. Um, I I still care about the game, but. But in a, as a matter of fact, I do uh, I do West Virginia, West Virginia games, University, yeah. Yeah. University baseball for ESPN Plus now, um, and I also do a lot of high school baseball and high school basketball here in Western Pennsylvania. Um, you know, my my, my the, the reality is that as it relates to the competitive balance of baseball, it is my belief that first of all, the Players Association, which runs the game does not care about the competitive balance of baseball. And I also maintain that the major markets don't care about the competitive balance of baseball. Yep. And so what needs to be addressed, in my opinion, is what football has done uh, and what hockey has done. And, and that is, um, you know, salary cap and some kind of way to, <coughs> excuse me, to make it uh, be a better balance for fans Um that want to be loyal, but the other thing too is is that is that the players aren't going to be loyal because in the final analysis, even though a player, because his agent tells him so, a player will say, "Gee, I want to be a pirate the whole rest of my life." That's not true. They they want to go where the money is, and they in some cases will be hoping that that money will lead them to championships, etc. So, uh, um, you know, there's as I say, player association has always run the game. Yeah, will continue to run the game, 
and um, and so many things that need to be fixed uh, will not be because the players association and agents won't allow it to happen. Yeah, that union's way too strong. All right, let's shift gears to basketball. One of the reasons we specifically asked you to be on our program today, and again, thank you. Uh, I want to take you back in time. We're getting into the time machine here. February 23rd, 1985. Now, you were there courtside, and I've been teasing what, what today's anniversary was in the show. This is the infamous Bobby Knight uh, in Indiana. What did Tell us, take us back to that moment and what the heck you were thinking uh, when he threw that well, chair. Well, yeah, a couple of things that are, that are somewhat ironic to me. I have probably been asked about the Bobby Knight chair <laughs> game more than anything else in my career. 5,000 Major League Baseball games, and yet that is the one that gets me on shows like yours. Well, okay? I led with baseball. Uh, I could talk baseball all day. Okay, all right, okay. Uh, and, 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 the, and the second thing, everybody always says to me, including my students, you know, uh, well, what did you say? What do you mean what I say? I just described <laughs> what happened, okay? What, 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 a couple of things about that. First of all, uh, at the time, my son David was about 14 or 15. And I'm into presidential history, and, and my son David was into it as well, or still into it. And we went, we went from Pittsburgh to Indianapolis and visited the Benjamin Harrison home the night before. So he was with me uh, for that game, and he vividly remembers all of what transpired. And then the ironic thing, I worked with a guy named Bill Hoskett, who was a great Ohio State basketball player, played in the NBA a little bit. What I, when the game was at 4 o'clock, and it was a beautiful day in Bloomington, and, and when when Coach Knight came out, I said, Coach Knight looks like he is ready to go play golf after this game. <laughs> and after he threw the chair, Bill Hoskett said, I guess Coach Knight's tee time is earlier than we thought it was going to be. He got nine in at least. That's hysterical. Yeah, so, so – um, but I, you know, I don't, I don't remember an awful lot about it, other than, I mean, I couldn't tell you the final score and, and yeah. all that. And uh, I, if you look carefully at the video, there are some handicapped people in wheelchairs over there uh, in, in the area to which he threw, he threw the chair. Yeah, he throws, he throws the chair, and if you look, there's a couple of folks. Yeah. You know. And the one point that when I rewatched it again last night for the millionth time, he, when Gene Cady is talking to the refs, he goes over and actually almost pushes Gene Cady out of the way to talk to the refs, which by nowadays he'd be suspended and there'd be controversy and every show would be dissecting it. But uh, what a moment. I just, uh, it's, it's hard to believe for me that was 39 years ago. So, wow. Um, now, Lenny, you, uh, it was, 30, it was 80, 39 years ago, 1985. Yeah. 39 years ago. Right. Mm -hmm. Is that 14, okay. 38 years ago? Wait, I was right. The four, uh, 15. I was right. 39. I was right. The first time. Anyway. So Lenny, um, you do, you're, you're at Waynesburg's, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, Waynesburg college where you, where you, you're a professor, Waynesburg university. Waynesburg university, which I've been to, I've done okay. shows at W and J is close by, right? It's out that way. No, it's our arch rival. That's no. our arch rival, um, and I shouldn't have brought that yeah, up. By the way, I got I to tell you that that it was it's so much fun being on the, the show with you when you when you texted me and said I, I'm a comedian. I love humor. Uh, as a matter of fact, uh, I think humor is one of the greatest gifts that God has given us, and I just I just love it. And uh, um, I have to be careful because at times I tell jokes that turn out to be borderline. Matter of fact. <laughs> I have a joke that I tell at banquets, and I've told it probably two thousand times. But it's such a good one. You got to you know, tell it. It's, I won't tell. No, oh. no. You can call me. You call me later, and, right. I'll, and I'll tell you the joke. Okay, okay. If you want to use it. It's it's just a fabulous joke. But but when I do banquets, I just I just what I'm trying to not, not that I'm a stand up comedian like you are. But I, I really love when there is uh, some humor in the room and, and things aren't taken all that seriously. I do Hall of Fame banquets and all of that. And, and so I, I'm always trying to find that little. And, and I love the fact that, you know, for example, I did a banquet recently and I went around the room beforehand so that I met some of the people that were in the audience that were friends of the Hall of Famers. And I met this one guy and he's like 89 years old. And uh, and I said, are you so and so's father? And he goes, yeah. And I said, well, where's you know, where's your wife? And he said, she's sitting across the table from him. So later in the evening, when I you know when I introduced it, I, I introduced he stood up, and I did the same thing you know for the audience. I said, <laughs> uh, sir, how many years you've been married? He goes, oh, for sixty two. And I go, well, where's your wife? And he goes, you know. And I point out, hey. There's the secret to America, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Always have your wife sit across the table from me when you have dinner with her. 
I, I do. I just, I just love humor. It's, it's fine. Love. It's fine. And and when it can, be, I look. I've I've been a million banquets late. Well, not as many as you, but if several of those banquets and. And that's what everyone, I think, you want to hear the sports stories. You want to hear the behind-the-scenes stuff, the funny stuff. And and bank, I, I do banquets. They're fun to do because if you know some of the people and you know some of the inside stuff, it makes it a lot of fun. So uh, that's really that's really wonderful. Now, you have a golf tournament as well, right, that you uh, do regularly? I do. I do. So it's 37 years. We raise money for thing, a place called Family Lunch. Hey, um, uh, and I appreciate that, you know, that, you know, Bob Prince – uh, means a lot to me. Uh, Bob Bob was a great friend of mine. Bob told me early in my career that I had to be a part of the community. I had to do things to help um, uh, serve, that I had to be more than just a voice on the air. And that was great advice uh, advice for me. And uh, you know, I'll always be deeply indebted to Bob Prince for uh, tremendous advice that he gave me. And, and by the way, before I say goodbye, um, and I, cause I don't know how long you want to keep me on, how boring I am. <laughs> You're be, not but, boring. <laughs> um, but, but, uh, I, I got to make a comment about my good friend, Jim Leland. Um, Yo, God, I was going to ask uh, you at the hall of fame this year. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, we are. So those of us in Pittsburgh are so thrilled, uh, that Jimmy has been inducted into the hall of fame. It'll be July 21st. It just so happens that I live right next to the country club here in Pittsburgh. Uh, Jimmy Leland lives not too far from the country club as well. So we play a lot of golf together. Um, and nobody has done more for me in baseball than Jim Leland. Um, I'm very, very blessed that Jim allowed me at some point during his tenure with the Pirates to, uh, to be in his inner circle. Um, and I don't think there's ever been an announcer and a manager that have had the kind of relationship. He used to invite me up to his suite after games. Wow. And, um, and, and, and I would be there when his coaches would talk about players. And, and, and the first time it happened, I said to him, Jim, I shouldn't be here. And he said, no, nah, I, I trust you. And so the, the, the great thing about it is that I was privy to a lot of behind the scenes information. And Jimmy allowed me to find subtle ways ways to impart that information to to the Pirates fans without necessarily identifying him. But the great thing for me as a broadcaster, you know, if I if I knew that Jimmy wasn't a big fan of a particular player, then uh, I didn't have to necessarily let the audience know that. But that didn't mean <laughs> that I would I wouldn't be making, you know, gra- great comments about that player when I know you know, that they were about, about to trade him. So Jimmy's done so much, so much for me. And, and, and I've got to get to Cooperstown on July 21st. Uh, I've got to find a way to be there to, uh, to take in what a monumental day that's going to be for all of us who have great respect. I, I he just, as, as great a manager, Jimmy Leland is, he's even a greater friend. Everybody should have a friend like Jim Leland. I love that. And, and I just saw him at the hall of fame signing his plaque and, and seeing his plaque. There's a clip online of him and, and I, I'm, I've never been more excited for anyone I got to watch play or whatever to be in the Hall of Fame than Jim Leland. And I'll leave you with this question then. Uh, as a Die Hard Pirate fan, uh, Dave Parker, does Dave Parker belong in the Hall of Fame? Oh, without question, he belongs. Uh, exactly. As a matter, as a matter, as a matter of fact, scoop. That whole, <laughs> the, the whole, the whole. Them, Danny Murtaugh's not. Yeah, in the that's Hall a shame thing. too. But I, mean, but I mean, but 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 here's the deal, okay? Barry Bonds, or, or Mark McGuire, Roger Clemens, all those people should be in the Hall of Fame. They were never suspended, okay? Yeah. They were never suspended. Plus, did Major League Baseball teams take money from fans? while those guys were chasing records? That's true. The answer yeah. is yes. Yep. Okay. So wh- wh- <laughs> and the, what, what, what annoys me is, is that the, all these sports writers, if, here's the thing about the Hall of Fame. When it started and they handed the balloting to sports writers, those guys were covering 162 games a year. That doesn't happen anymore. OK, and now they've got people here in Pittsburgh voting for the Hall of Fame that probably watch 10, 12, 15 games a year um, and mostly on television. And and they have this moral compass. They keep acting like they're they're the you know, the number one person as it relates to morality. And, and it's it's absurd. It's absolutely absurd. And they ought to change the balloting. They ought to yeah. change the voting. And as a matter of fact, I maintain that major league announcers would be better served. Yes to vote for the Hall of Fame. They're at every Major game. Yeah, absolutely. You're there at every game. So I couldn't agree more. And, and Dave Parker, I hope before it's too late, 
they can get him in, and that's something he can see because no, he deserves. It. Nobody played the game harder than Dave Parker. That's nobody. true, and I even I remember seeing him. Uh, you know, after all the controversy of what happened, and still watching him play. I'll never forget the game I was at. He hit a homer. He rounded first base. He was heading to second, and I guess it was maybe Joe Lynette or Al Monch. It was like eighty or eighty one. Called him back because he now, missed third, first base. First base or third? Uh, he well, missed. Al Monchak, it was Al Monchak. First base is Monchak. So okay. they call him back, and he had to go back and hit first base, and he did it so slow. And when he went back, he stamped on the on the the base, and the crowd went nuts. And then he continued his slow trot around the base. But the Cobra was one of my heroes with pops and everything. And so were you, Lanny for Terry. I this was a big thrill for me. I really appreciate it. Um, I, I can't thank you enough for being on the show and talking about Bobby Knight, which I know you've talked about a million times, and. And being able That's to talk okay. pirate baseball, that was a thrill for me. So I appreciate it. And uh, like I said, I met you a few times when I was about 12 years old, and I hope to do it in the future now that I'm I'm older than 12 years old. Don't forget to call me so I can give you that joke. Oh, okay? you, oh you know I am. Trust me. I appreciate it. I will call you. It, it is. It is and, but the <laughs> thing is, if you use this joke ever, you have to find a way to give me credit for it. Okay? I, I always give credit. I will do that. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. Awesome. All right. Uh, we're going to take a break, guys. We'll be back with Vinny Maliulo. Lanny for Terry, ladies and gentlemen. I'm calling him right now, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you, Lanny. South Point offers all the types of entertainment you'd expect at a first-class Las Vegas resort. Did you know our 400-seat showroom is one of Las Vegas' top destinations for live entertainment? Enjoy live performances by classic Vegas entertainers, bands, and today's hottest comedians, plus a rock and dance floor. You can also enjoy live entertainment at the Grand View Lounge, where you'll feel all the vibes of old Las Vegas. Enjoy the music, and if you love to laugh, don't miss The Dirty at 1230, our very own free comedy show, every Friday night at 12.30 a.m. in the Grand View Lounge. The Dirty is 100% free, so arrive early. Go to southpointcasino.com or call the box office at 77136 for today's performances at the showroom and the Grand View Lounge. When you're ready for your favorite cocktail, stop in and unwind at one of our seven specialty lounges. There's a bar around every corner, because you're in Vegas, baby. South Point Casino has plenty of attractions for the whole family. Catch a movie. Our 16-screen movie theater includes two XD extreme screens for the ultimate in viewing, sound, and luxury. After the show, treat the family to a variety of treats at our old-fashioned ice cream parlor, Kate's Corner. We scoop up a variety of creamy concoctions, including smoothies, hand-dipped cones, milkshakes, malts, sodas, and sundaes. At Kate's, there's something for everyone. And if you've still got time to spare, our bowling center might be right up your alley. Voted Best of Las Vegas, it's a great place for friends and family fun. 64 lanes, a pro shop, snack bar, and arcade. And while the kids are bowling, you can play slots and sip on a drink in the Alley Cat Lounge while overlooking the lanes. For our more serious and professional bowlers, the South Point is also home to a separate tournament bowling plaza. Classic joke. I can't share it. I'd love to, but I can't. Uh, yeah, so there you go. Hold up the sign. Uh, apparently, Vinny, I said Pittsburgh uh, five, three times, five times during the interview. Five more times. So the tally, I feel like uh, Ed McMahon and Jerry Lewis here calling for a timp timpani. Uh, so I'm up to $70. I've said it. Uh, well, five into 70 goes uh, 20, 14 20. times. 14 times since uh, Lent. And you're not allowed to say it? Is well, that, I, you, I volunteered this idea for Lent that I won't say my hometown. Right. Every time I do, I'll put $5 in, then we'll take that money, and we'll place a futures bet, or we'll go out and have a drink uh, as a crew. So I thought, I'd, I thought I honestly thought the over-under was around 20 bucks. So we're going out drinking. <laughs> and, where, and, and once again, where, and where are you from again, Frank? Uh, I'm not. That, see, D Denny, tr Denny Nagel tried to bait me a few times yesterday. I'm not, I'm not falling for it. I'm not going to fall for it's it. It's early. It's early. I still got 20 minutes left in this show. Uh, and I believe for the first time uh, from Sports by the Book, and he works here with Chris Andrews yeah. and Jimmy Vaccaro. Vinny Maiulo's here, everybody. Yeah, hey, Vinny. Hey. That's thing, first I, I sent your audition. I, <laughs> I was flown That's right. Here. I'm responsible. That's right. Vinny, <laughs> Vinny's responsible. Vinny and Ann and Chris. I flew up from L.A., and we did a little impromptu audition about 20 minutes in the studio. Yeah. 
And I don't know how many other people they talked with. That's, we didn't need to talk to anybody That's else. It. That was it. Was done. It was the dinner that clinched it. We had about a two-hour <laughs> dinner over at the Silverado Steakhouse, which you should come to because it's amazing food. But, uh, yeah, it's good to have you on the show. Good and these guys with you, are- buddy. Of course, he's uh, taking a little time off, a little deserved time. Yeah. You know, good. there was a time. Right? This was um, uh, bookmakers, like, vacation. Super- Once the Super Bowl was done, yeah. we'd be gone for, like, a like, see you in a month. <laughs> yeah, right. You know? I a mean, lot of shows on TV are taking a few I weeks mean, off like, before baseball it, it, we, we, it was pretty standard. And that's when we started to put up college baskets. Now, of course, we put them up from day one. Wow. And uh, how things have changed. And thankfully, you know, there's so many things that have changed for the good. Yeah. Although a month off wasn't too bad. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there's no off season anymore. And the NFL, I mean, uh, the, the, now everyone's talking about the draft immediately. And there's draft, draft, draft. You know, this NFL just, I, I will tip my cap to them. It's yeah. A, they, they always stay relevant no matter what time of year it is. It's amazing. And, uh, you know, credit them for that. Great, uh, great PR, great advertising. But also, you know, we're always in look ahead mode now, Frank. Mm-hmm. More so, we look at all the baseball stuff we're doing now, right? Even though you know, uh, you know, teams are just starting exhibition games. Um, you've got to keep track of what's happening with the NFL in terms of uh, you know some free agent signings sure. and how they impact uh, uh, teams. Uh, any trades that take place. Um, the next thing will be with the uh, the NFL draft and the clustering of trades and draft picks you know how how you know how they may impact um uh, the the futures and things like that so and of course you know now is uh, college basketball becomes front and center yes. because we're getting ready getting for, the, March for the tournament you yeah. know so there's always uh, uh something and, and it's better to be busier now i mean there was just it, it i'm i'm happier now with the fact that we're busier yeah on a more consistent basis for the calendar year. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I mean, you stay busy and uh, things go faster and there's no lulls yeah. in life. Mm-hmm. Uh, we could talk about the NFL draft. The the Bears have the first round pick. What do you think of that, uh, Ryan? What do you think they should do? Pass. See, that's what he has to give up for Lent. He's not allowed to talk about the Chicago Bears quarterback situation. And he's much better at me of avoiding the topic. Boy, I could tell he's really enjoying that too. He's like, he's like, like look he, at, he's he, dying. Is he tied to his yeah. chair? He, because he's he wants even wearing, to show him your jersey. Show, did you see? Yeah. He's got a Cubs jersey on. Nice blue Cubs jersey there. Yeah. So if you talk about if it, you anything. say Bears, which I won't try to bet you, but if you say Bears, is it the same thing? Is it like an open tab at the bar? No, no. It, it's I have to mention the quarterbacks' names. Yeah, you can't talk about Caleb Williams or Justin Fields. What if they? What if they decide to draft somebody else? Like, well, like luckily May. Can you me, say May, for instance? Yeah. Can you can you say a different name? Well, uh, yeah, I guess that would follow in the quarterback situation. You guys have more stipulations but, than we had for the Super Bowl. I know. For <laughs> but the draft is after Jeez. Lent, so I'll be good for. A yeah, I'll days. have a month after Lent to talk about this about the draft. So he, can, I listen. It's this was my own dream. idea. So this is where I screwed up. Uh, I should have. I shouldn't have done this. Um, so there is no football, but we do have a football game that we want. We want a football event that we want to show Vinny a clip of. Vinny, take it. a look at this clip. I don't know if you want to handicap this or not, but this is apparently something. I don't know what country it's in, but take a look at this. Dutchland, uh, the ice ice football. Yeah, it's ice football. This ice is football, football played on ice. So here you go. There you go. So there's the snap, and the guy's got the ball, and he's running very gingerly around the end. Will he score? He's at the ten. He's at the five. touchdown. So they're not on skates. They're just what? running on ice. What? Ice football. I've never heard of this, but... We used to do that in, in, in Brooklyn all the time <laughs> it, it, because it was, was freezing outside. I mean, it's a we didn't, but this, game. And we didn't have helmets or anything. Like, right. um, no, I'm, I'm, no, I gave it up for Lent. Yeah, right. <laughs> I gave up ice football for that? Lent. Was it Russia or Czechoslovakia? Uh, it, Somewhere. Dutchland? I, what was that? It, Dutchland? Yeah, yeah, somewhere in Germany. Okay, somewhere in Dutchland. Dutchland. <laughs> well, I mean, what is that where Holland and Germany? <laughs> exactly. Is that, is exactly. that like a, a new, like sort of like Alsace? What, 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 I went right. with the account. All right, it, yeah, Germany. <laughs> oh my God! You better start talking about your quarterbacks because yeah, you're exactly. in, you're, you're, re, you're redefining the, the European map. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, <laughs> so listen, we got a lot of basketball now. Now Fridays in college basketball, obviously, I remember. Uh, you got a lot of Ivy League action, but Saturday's the big stuff, and you'll be uh, yeah, you'll be talking tomorrow. I mean, right now, I listen. I I follow the ACC most intently. So does Ryan. He's a UNC fan. Why do you follow the ACC? I'm because the Panthers. Don't make me say their first word. I have a futures uh-huh. on the Panthers that I put in. I'm not allowed to say it. 
But right now, I, for some reason, Tennessee keeps to be keeps the team that I keep watching play. And Houston, I don't know. I don't know who. This seems like a wide open year. I know we say it every year, but um, who are some teams you're looking at? Like, okay, this is a future. Well, everybody, everybody, kind of, you know the blue bloods, right? Yeah. And things. And by the way, you know. So today, you've got a lot of Ivy, like you mentioned, yeah. and uh, Metro Atlantic. Uh, oh, Duquesne's you know, playing. And yes, that's where I went to school for the, a semester. You, you and Chris. Yeah, Chris. Uh, Chris, did you go to Duquesne too? Oh no! Wait, he went to Robert Morris. Robert, he's Bobby Moe. Yeah, right? he went to, yeah, I went, he to, went to Robert Morris for a That's semester, right. but I had a three point two blood alcohol level. Yeah. That's a, okay. <laughs> All right. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> and so, but what you want to pay attention to with the Ivies today in your handicapping okay. is that they play tomorrow too. They go back to back. Oh. So the the Ivies that are playing today, they've got games tomorrow, and you want to. So last week we were talking about this. There was look ahead spots where you know the top. Uh, uh, Teams in the Ivies were playing on Friday, but then they were playing heads up the next day. So there's a little bit of th- something to look at. And then, of course, the Ivies, they kind of get a jump on things that way for their conference tournament because okay. the conference tournaments, yeah. as we know, were successive days. So, um, you know, they, they added the uh, the Ivy tournament a few years back. And, you know, so that's something to keep an eye on and how teams respond to that. Ooh. So just a little bit. But now, as far as your uh, uh, your hometown team, which you won't say. I'm not allowed to. Okay, but... Uh, in, in the ACC, Pitt plays. Um, can you say Pitt? Yeah, I, can you, can, I, I've been saying Pitt. I've been allowed to say is he, Pitt. Is he allowed to abbreviate, or, I, or, is, or is that like a half drink? That's like I mean, it's like two fifty. I got to put yeah. two fifty. <laughs> well, you just said Pitt, so put two fifty in there. <laughs> no, don't let I, I'm see. I, I'm just. I, I just. Well, I just. I just asked. Her, I mean, again, I want to know the rules. <laughs> Part of part of my job is see I don't want any controversy when somebody comes to cash. I want a very definitive yes, you got it. Or Need I'm sorry, all the information. Exactly. I'm sorry. But um, no, sir. In all seriousness, Pitt is a dangerous team. Yeah, I think so. But I yeah. mean, look what they did to Duke mm-hmm. twice. Yeah. Um, they're they're a very tough out, and there are teams that are emerging now in the various conferences, like like Pitt. If you look at Iowa State's not been a secret. I mean, if you look at the Big 12, there's, the whole, that's the best conference that there is. I've watched a lot of Big 12. But when you, you want to start looking at – look at Washington State. They beat Arizona again last – they swept Arizona this year yeah, as double-digit dogs ending, yeah. in both in both games. So you you want to start looking at teams that, again, are playing real good now and who are beating quality opponents. I mean, if you look at last week, Arizona uh, was in uh, uh, that number one spot, you know – Joel Lenardi does a, his bracketology right. uh, on a regular basis, does a good job with it. A lot of folks follow it. And, um, you know, he's got to take Arizona out of that out of, uh, that number one spot now in, in, in the West. So, but, you know, Frank, you start looking at teams that are, you know, playing really good now, and okay. this is this is the time of year that they want. Now, it's not a matter of – then you have to determine who's peaking too early and right. who's really got some <laughs> consistency. And I think right. about it in the two cases, the two teams we mentioned in Pitt – and Washington State, they've demonstrated some consistency too. So um, you start looking for teams that are that are dangerous. Um, what do you think of Creighton? A- now everyone's talking about Creighton. It's a sexy <clears> pick, <throat> I know. And what they did to to UConn was uh, insane. I mean, that was the, yeah, well, that was an annihilate. I mean, everything it was the perfect storm, yeah, right? They you just outplayed them. Now I'd like game. to see. For me, what I like to see is how they come out of that game, and now what, what they what they do this weekend, right? Yeah. Because uh, was it an anomaly? Now Creighton's been. You know they've been touted for a while. They know their name, yeah. Um, I I think you know the 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 Big East is is really not as not as strong as it you would think. But but think about it: three teams last week that were slated in number one number one spot: Arizona, yeah. Uh, you, you know the uh, Connecticut and Purdue. They all got beat. <laughs> and they're probably you know somebody is going to get beat again along the way, whether it's before their respective. Their conference conference tournaments yeah. or or not? Uh, now you've got to see. I, I like to see, and I think what's important for folks to watch is how do teams respond or how do they uh, come out of that game into their next game. So yeah. I think in the case of Creighton, was it an anomaly? Now let's see this how weekend. they move forward these these next uh, these next few games. But that's something to sort of pay close attention to. For yeah, sure. absolutely. Yeah. Um, uh, I have a first of all, I want to say. The Washington Post did that article on you guys last uh, week that you got to look up. It was on Chris Andrews and Jimmy and 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 Vinny here in the sports book. They called you a young De Niro. Uh, yeah, I, I think uh, yeah he did uh, he did <laughs> reference that. That happens uh, from time to time. And from my understanding, Frank, uh, 
And again, I know that you get recognized wherever you go. It, it, you, you have to, you know, you, you kind of just downplay it all. But I understand. I think it happens to to Robert De Niro a lot. So, like today's Friday, he's probably at his favorite Italian restaurant, right. you know, down in Little Italy or something, and he's got to go. The guy, you, you know what? You, 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 God, God, you look like Vinnie Maiolo. <laughs> And he's going to be sitting up again this Finney Again, who is this Finney Moyo guy? Again. I love it. Now, did you collect, uh, I want to move, I want to uh, post with punchlines. I want to do a few of those with Vinny. Why not? Um, did you collect cards as a kid, baseball cards? Yes. Okay, so. Yes, uh, I did. Where is your baseball card collection? Uh, or did well, you give it away or did your mom throw yeah, it out? There's a combination what... of things. Okay. Actually, I, um, I, I still have a few. Yeah, same. However, not. Not the good one because, of course, you know, uh, Mickey Mantle yep. sur- made made your bike sound more like a Harley. So he's not going to understand what you're saying right there. Oh, we have to explain this. Do you understand cl- what he's saying with the the bike and baseball cards? You used to and K- Caden, I am not even going to look at. So anyway, Caden, right. you know what a clothespin is? <laughs> you do know what a clothespin is. I mean, it's you know because I know we have dryers now with like you know fifteen you know uh, uh, you know computer chips in them and everything. Use. We put uh, you used to put cards on the spokes of your bike. Yeah. To make it sound like a motorcycle. Right. Yeah. Also, a milk carton. I used to put a milk carton wow. on the back. Yeah. And you'd pedal, and it would, the cardboard cartons, and it would make it sound like a motorcycle. Yeah. I know about the water bottle. What's it? You did a water bottle. Yeah. That okay. was a wiser choice. Yeah. See, right. you kids were definitely More ahead green. of the financial curve. Like right. I said, because the better the player, like Mickey Mantle, yeah. Hank Aaron, Willie Mays, oh, you had like, you know, you had a brand new Harley. You had to, yeah, yeah. it looked cool, but so. little, little did you know. <laughs> Many years later, that was six figures yeah, that were pedaling exactly. around the neighborhood. You know, Gone. I had Pete Rose cards, and I hated Pete Rose, but I put all these, I had, I had a whole wheel of <laughs> exactly. Pete Rose cards, and I'm like, holy crap, I should have <laughs> kept those cards. Right. Roberto Clemente. So I do have a, a few uh, a few uh, still, but uh, certainly not okay. what I So I'm I fascinated by this thing called breaking. Is that what it's called? These, these people, they open these live yeah, cards. All right. Breaking. So go ahead. Show the Wembenyana clip. So this 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 card. Yeah, this is the, the first one. Okay, so this card. is the guy opening it. Do we have volume on this, by the way, for Vinny and I here, please? Oh, my God. <gasps> Louder, please. Oh, my God. So there was a some one dealer put a $100,000 bounty on anyone who could find this card. So this guy, they, so now online, Vinny, people open a card, they open a pack of cards, and they, they put it on the online. They open a pack. Yeah, and people watch it like me. So, wait a second. Yeah. This card is worth a quarter of a million That's dollars what right, now? right now. Is it autographed by him, or does it have like a, a like his? Uh, it's uh, like a one of one. So it's like the only card, only version of that card printed. Right. So it's like gold. So there was a guy that was offering a hundred grand for it, but already they say it's maybe worth a quarter of a million dollars. So what here's what gets me about the the card collected today. Yeah. There's there's so many um, series. Yeah. There's it used so to many be just issues. tops. I get. It. So you're saying that this is one of what? This is the only. One only card one. only one only the, one with that gold surround trim yeah meanwhile though but there's probably a million with a different trim around right. it right okay yeah when we were growing up yeah and not so long ago when you were guys were there was a rookie card yeah right a rookie yep. card a rookie That's card it. yeah okay my son who's now 34 right he went a few years but when right Bryce Harper was a rookie okay he went give me I want to oh, buy yeah. some Bryce Harper Local rookie Vegas cards guy, yeah. right Okay, exactly. Vegas guy, boom. Gets a bunch, he gets a stack of them. Come to find out, there's, I don't know, 20, 30, 50 different there's, Bryce Harper cards. It's, there's gold foil. And then and there's, there's series, exactly, yeah. which, this orange border or this blue border. <laughs> what? The, how, yeah. What? Yep. They belong in the boat. And yep. the, put them back in the bicycles, folks. <laughs> They're I <worthless>. mean, <laughs> what the, yeah. Well, I, you got a, how many rookie cards are there? I it's got a rookie ridiculous. card. Yeah, I got a rookie card. So I said, look it up in a minute. Oh, yeah, I got a rookie card. Yeah, it's worth five cents. Yeah, exactly. Well, I didn't, wait a minute. I, I paid a dollar for right. it when he was a rookie. Well, I, t- I told the story. I had a Mark McGuire rookie card when he was with the Olympic team. Oh, yeah. And yeah. when I first moved to L.A., I was running low on money, so I took it to a card store. And it was worth – the Beckett guy said like 75 yes. 100 bucks. Right. The guy – I had two of them. He goes, I'll give you 40 for both. I'm like, oh, fine. And I did it. And then he got caught with the steroids and everything, and it went down the two. So down. I won out so on you that. Won out. I won out on that one. But I do have some rookie – I still have some – I have Clemens. I have Gwyn. I have Ricky Henderson. So those are pretty valuable. Then there's another clip. Okay, is this another Wemby card? Yeah, yeah. All right, show this one yeah. to Vinny. Volume up, please. Okay, so this is a one. This is another six feet. This is in Japan. Yeah, so another one that's one of one. One of one. Yeah, one so watch him slowly reveal. He believes it's. He sees the foot. Look at this. <laughs> he just got Wemby. <laughs> 
<laughs> is he just excited or having an earthquake? I'm not sure what's going on over there. I, but I love, I, I sit there and when I'm scrolling through TikTok, they know the algorithm now. I will go, I'm not going to watch this. And then I sit there for 10 minutes and I watch people <laughs> open packs of sports cards. I know. And it's, I'm fascinated by it. It is fascinating. I mean, you there you can bid. Can't you bid on boxes of cards? Yeah. Now, or packs yeah. of cards yeah. and yeah. things and, like and, that. And they take that exacto night to open the box. And I'm always nervous. Like, oh, my God, if you yeah. go too deep, yeah. you're going to cut a card. What are you doing? Listen, you know, I think it's, you know, it's fascinating. I mean, if you want to get into it, I just think today it's it's so difficult for Let's say you're, you're a parent. You want, hey, you want to buy some cards? Yeah. Dad, I want to go out and buy some cards. Let's buy a pack of cards. Yeah, it costs you 500 I'm telling you. Yeah. I used to, look, they were yeah. a quarter with the gum. I right? mean, when I was a yeah. kid, I'd get a box yeah. for my birthday. That was my big pride. I loved it. it. Yeah. Now I'll be at like Target and I'm at the checkout and they have like a bunch of cards. So I'll grab a couple packs and if they're like $8 a pack. I'm like, wait, what did I grab? You know? Yeah. I'm like, the other thing now is with the cards is this grading. Yeah, yep. oh, right. Yeah. Mint yep. ten. You gotta be. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, so you're telling. So again, let's go to one which is eighty nine Griffey. Okay. Yeah. Upper oh, deck. Oh, yeah. There's a whole. Right. Good. But is it graded? Yeah. Right. Like, what do you mean graded? Right. <laughs> so you got a guy with a loop, like a. Ge- it's like he's a gemologist. <laughs> he is. He's- There's a slight dog here on the corner. Wait a second. You know, I think he's got a nostril hair yeah. in this one. I noticed. <laughs> I, I can't see it in the other. What do you wait? What do you? So you you send this in to be graded, correct? Yep. Okay, and then it comes back in a sealed plastic, you know, like whatever, hermetically sealed right? and like yep. loose okay. tight. I know some guys. I got a, a buddy of mine who does this. Right, he sends it in. He goes, you know what? I don't like that. I think that I I send it in. I know it's got to be a ten. He yeah. gets it back. It's a nine. Yeah. What does he do? He cracks it, sends it back in, and he keeps sending it back in until, until he gets, until a, he gets a ten. Finally, he won't, a couple of times he got a ten. Gets a guy after lunch. I'm like, what? <laughs> what? This guy have a clean? This guy had a clearer loop, a cleaner loop. What? <laughs> and so, was there one more cracking, or was that it? Yeah, yeah. Caitlin Clark's. Oh, Caitlin Clark. Watch this. All right, Caitlin Clark card. I think this is one of one two signed. So watch this. I think it's a, out of five. Out of, no, two out of five. Yeah. This is a, so she signed this. Yes. yes. That's the, that's and he turns it over. Let's go. And he's already putting it. Look, he's already putting it in the little thing, which I would be nervous in dog here. Two of five. Two out of five. And, and he doesn't even have her stats on the back either. It's just no. specifying that's an autographed card. Now, would the one of five be worth wow. more than the two of five? The uh, number one? No. Not yes. Necessarily. No? There's some people put more value on specific numbers. Okay. Um. But it would still have to be graded example. naturally, right? Right. Right. So the three of five might be graded higher. Yeah, right. It could right? be. Right. But see, that's what makes me nervous. He has that little, the little slippy once. Yeah, yeah. In. But if you put it in wrong, uh, you, get, you just cost yourself you fifty just, grand. You afraid? You, you afraid? <laughs> yep. I, it's fascinating. No question All right, Vinny, about so you're it. You're on sports by the book with Mr. I am Jeff going Parles to sit today. with Jeff Parles today. Yes, indeed. Free, on free throw Friday. Free that's throw what, Friday. Free throw what, Friday. What is free throw Friday? Well, it's basketball season. Well, so yes. We used to have they, football yeah. Fridays. Oh, now yeah, we have we, free throw Friday. So, I like it. I yeah. like the alliteration. What are we going to do for hockey? Uh, get the puck out of here. I don't know what we're going <laughs> to. I'm not sure. We'll have to be careful. <laughs> well, listen. We appreciate you guys watching. Don't forget, there's so many more shows like Sports by the Book coming up today at three o'clock. We have Race Day Las Vegas yep. with Ralph Sirocco, which you can get all your horse picks and great winners from Ralph. Show's doing great. And our newest show, Brendan Gone's Gone Racing. Yep. Usually Thursdays at 10. Uh, it was this week, Wednesday, because there's... Mm-hmm. there's this, this next or, week. Next week, it'll be Wednesday. Next, I'm week, sorry. Wednesday. next week, it'll be Wednesday because uh, we have a race in town, the Pennzoil yep. 400, which I'm going to next Sunday. I've never been to a NASCAR you race. You should go. I'll I'm be going. out there Saturday. I give away free betting tickets Oh, to, to fans. Nice. South really? Point writes bet betting tickets. Nice. In fact, I'll be on with uh, Brendan uh, this week. Okay, well, and, you know uh, the Jeff only, Motley. You know the only guy I bet in NASCAR. It's got to be Joey Logano. Joey Logano, of course. Oh, come only, on, he's the only the one. Come on, he's the only. Isn't he? I don't even know. I think so. Who Let's are the other any drivers? More, any more vowels here? <laughs> I don't see Gibbs, Blaney. <laughs> Trucks, Hamlin. I don't see. Any you, other. Well, you could change a couple. Yeah. You know, so <laughs> we can, we can. you know, you can, you know, you can, you know, uh, tight get Gibby. You yeah. Know, put instead of Gibby, put an E on his. You know, oh, Austin Dillon, Austin Dillo. Oh, there you Why go. Not? Austin Dillo. I can make them all a time. <laughs> How much time we have? <laughs> well, I'm gonna. Bet, I bet Joey last week. Uh, he didn't win, but I got him twelve to one. Uh, next week. So anyway, we have great shows here at South Point Studios. Again, live chat room. Thank you for always uh, watching. Uh, is there anything? Uh, Frank Mergy has to lay down. He loved it. He loved the Lanny for Terry. That one was for me, so we appreciate you guys. Uh, Lanny for Terry, who I grew up listening to, so that was great. And Vinny was here for Terry, Nicotero, 
Malulo. And I'll believe Don Friday. There you go. You got to love it. Have a good weekend, everybody. This is Punchlines Live in Nevada. Every show.